I wanted to show you how, what I think is a great setup for your watercolors. This is, uh, if you're right-handed, if you're left-handed, you do the exact opposite of what I have here. Uh, this is a dog water bowl that you could just flatten and be able to open up and put water and pretty much have it anywhere. So that's where I keep my water. I'm not a big worry wart about constantly changing my water to be fresh. I think it's okay if there's a little tint in it. So I'm not really overly worried about that. So immediately to my right is my water bowl. I have this really nice brush holder. The reason why I like having this here is because you could, before you get started, set up your brushes left to right the largest away from me. Uh, this is one of my favorites. This is a silver black velvet number 20 that um, I got. I really like this brush for big, big washes. This, if you've watched any of my other videos or if you haven't, you're going to want to see how I took an old sable brush and I made it into this really wonderful, sexy scumble magic brush. Um, this is a synthetic, another synthetic. I just got this at the Met. Um, I've seen them in lots of uh, stores uh, for, of museums. So this is about a number 10 and this is a number 4. Pretty much all I'm going to need right now, maybe if you're doing architecture, you might uh, add a flat angled brush. If you're doing something that requires a rigger, you might have your rigger ready to go. Uh, here's one here. So you might have those if you think those are going to be things that are going to be in your painting. So this is my 33 uh, palette uh, uh, for all holding all of my colors. And this here is my, I had it a little upside down, this will be um, a downloadable on my website, fearlesswatercolors.com, which is all the colors that I use and a little test strip. We're going to be showing that in future videos. And I have it set up where I have my nice dark indigo and my blues. I go into my cool violets, into my warm violets, pinks, reds, oranges, some yellows going back down here into my greens. So it sort of makes a logical sense to me how it works. You need to set up yours so that um, it makes sense for you. I don't mix in my palette and on future basic videos I'm going to be telling you why I don't but basically it's because I get better colors and better results when I, I actually drop color right onto my paper. But right now we're just talking about your basic setup. Under here is a dish rag. It's one of those things that you would just put your wet dishes on and it absorbs the water. I like to have this here because one of the things that you want to do is control how much water is on your brush at any time. And if there's too much water on your brush, I just use this as a way to just take off just enough water off my brush or sometimes paint off my brush without flicking it. I've seen a lot of um, demos and teachers when they're out in the field or in their in, an old uh, place they might just flick it to just get that extra water off of their brush. You're not always in a place that you could do that so I use this. It's a nice way to replace paper towels and dish rags and everything else. This is this dish uh, drying mat is really um, one of the great things that I've discovered. So to me this is your basic setup. You should have this here ready to go. Water, paint brushes ready to go with your paints and everything is right there. You're not reaching over anything uh, to get to things. You're not looking for things. Everything is accessible. And this might seem a little basic to you but that's what we're doing is the basics. So that's my basic setup. Let's get started on more things. If you have any questions about this, feel free to email me, jan at fearlesswatercolors.com.